Welcome to another painting video. I'm currently working on some Imperial Fists aggressors. I use the Warmer 40k Conquest easy to build models for that. And I have tried to um, prime undercoat with Incubo Darkness with the rattle can, but either the can is quite old or there's um, too much wind outside or the paint is just um, not that good, I don't know. Um, you can see it on those uh, white uh, resin parts, how bad the coverage is. If I would go um, two or three times over the model I would clog all the details, so what I did is I just uh, painted everywhere where I couldn't reach with the regular base in Kubi Darkness. If you have an airbrush that would probably be the tool to use for this. I have none at hand and you might see that I am not too clean with that because um, I will follow with a Senatal spray of um, Wraith Bone, I think, is the new one of the new contrast um, spray paints. And after that, I will go or give it a wash, pin wash, and a little bit of cleanup with Incubi Darkness before I um, map out the oranges and the pre-shading for the yellow. So um, yeah, I'll back in a second with the Senatal Prant Marine. Okay, so here we go with the Wraithbone sprayed model. You can see that from below I kept all the dark parts and as said I will <coughs> wash the model with come on it could be darkness let's focus on that one for um, washing or yeah, mostly washing not glazing uh, with regular paints. I prefer to use a dry palette. Opposite to the wet palette. Um, just because um, the we would need a big area on our wet palette and thus I rather use a dry one so the mess I do will stay on that and I have enough room on my wet palette for the stuff that needs using a wet palette. I'm also trying to focus on the areas that will be dark later, not only the recesses and some details. We'll um, push that contrast a little bit more with a more thick paint. In the next step, I'm also avoiding um, playing this video fast forward so you can see how fast it can be done with the right tools at hand 
using a middle sized brush the paint is still wet in some areas so I can pick it off or I use my finger to rub it off and where the paint is already dry I go in with Incubi Darkness almost right out of the pot just mixed with a little bit of water where no the darkest parts of the model uh, will be. When doing this wet and wet it will also build up in a nice gradient. So now here comes the a further trick that I didn't um, show on the how to paint grimdark yellow tutorial because it, it's not about the yellow but it's about how I paint my metal parts around the imperial fists as I want those um, fuel drums and that compensator shielding uh, in a kind of shiny metal. I pre will pre-shade it so I will have an almost chrome effect later. So what I have to do is reverse my thinking. Whereas I you, I'm using a dark cold blue uh, for the shadows of my yellow and we will use orange for the top and white um, to get a nice shiny light yellow. Uh, reflection on shiny metals would be blue on the top because the sky would reflect on it. and brown or in this case red from below where the ground would, would reflect in <coughs> the metal. So I will just pre-shade the bottom of the ammo drums with morphing brown. We might have to, to clean up that later after we go over everything with the aerial yellow but it always does help to prep stuff in that way and you can already see the effect building up So now if you're a bit more advanced and want to um, use the current almost dry consistency of paint on the model now, you can start adding um, ba 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 Joker Arrow Orange right away to map out all the areas that will be our mid-tones later or you can just wait a few minutes until everything is dry. I might do that thing darker here. Yeah, it looks better. So next step would be um, blocking in the orange 
and after that some bone and some dry brushing before we glaze the whole model with aerial yellow. So this is pretty much the same as I show in the how to paint um, grimdark yellow tutorial. So I will focus on a few, just on a few parts, then finish all the steps and then show you how I did the weathering and battle damage on these models. Okay, so up to Juke Arrow Orange. I'm still using um, a rather big brush and I am trying to focus on the areas that will have our mid-tones later leaving the highest the highest parts like that one here uh, white almost so that the uh, sorry that the aerial yellow uh, will be the brightest spot in some places I will even go over the incubi darkness pre-shading to create a blend. Most of the leg will be covered by the gun later. So I'll keep that a bit more dark. When working on the backpack, it doesn't matter if you get some orange uh, to the rim of that particular area here, because the metal would reflect it nonetheless. some places I even go a bit dry brushy just to create a bit of a blend, not too much, don't need much of a blend. Just dry the to map out the colors from dark to light in a way that the model is defined is defined well and focus lies on those parts that are in the light and yeah on the face of course all your efforts when painting a model should be to push or pull the focus to the face So we could now um, block in a few highlights with Screaming Skull. If 
that I will use a smaller brush. And I will begin at the face, the helmet, and work my way outside from there. so that the focus of the yellow will stay on the top of the head of the miniature. We'll push this further later with um, Ultron Grey and Pure White if we want. I think that's good enough. So we'll let it dry properly and put on the first edge highlights with Ultron Grey. When dry brushing, there are two key elements um, that will make it work properly one is a huge soft brush that isn't too dirty I clean up my dry brushes uh, once a week or so this one is almost as its limits is it has uh, some thick blobs of paint on the bristles as this is a synthetic it doesn't hurt it overly much and I even need that state of brush sometimes to get small light edge highlights done. I forgot about um, what the second thing is you need for a good edge highlight dry brushing could be that it's um, the right amount of paint on your brush don't know so when I go over these um, fuel canisters you can already see that dry brushing it blends it in a way that it looks like um, non-metallic metal with only these um, three steps so far so the dry brushing not only works to get you some few extra highlights it also blends all our um, underpaint We'll need a little bit more paint on the brush. And as we will rub it off on the towel, uh, it makes sense to have only a little amount of paint on your brush. So it doesn't make sense to 
push it deep into your paint pot and then brush off 100% just go for having 20% paint on your brush and then brush off the rest so you will uh, 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 uh. you won't go through your, your your paint in no time if you rub everything of it to the towel so you see I'm even picking out those granulations on the foot Giving those parts another go might make sense. Here we are. So what's next? I think it um, would be good to do the yellow next. I'm going a uh, brush bigger again. This is a size 3. Still have some aerial yellow on my wet palette. We want it rather si thin, not as thin as a wash would be, and not as thin as we would have a glaze, something in between, so that it does flow, but not pool too much. to cover all the, 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 the all the surfaces to make the best of our pre-shading to make it blend properly pushing around the paint here and there so I get a I get a thin layer of it we don't want it in the recesses. If you get a little bit of it into the recess, it, do, it doesn't matter because the Wash of Agrix Earth shade we will apply later will cover that. This steps also defines how bright your yellow will be if you want it really bright just do a second or third layer I prefer it a bit darker a bit washed out so to say and feel free to adjust the it intensity of the yellow to your liking. Make just make sure that there's no intense yellow uh, down here in the shadows. So you get the most of that painterly or light focused effect however you want to call that you might also notice that 
when the aerial yellow is still fresh on the model it's a lot more brighter than when it dries so it makes sense to wait a few seconds until the stuff is dry before you apply the next layer as long as you are in doubt to how the intensity of the paint is to your liking that part was missing okay now again back to back to back to back to That's the wrong brush. Where's my small brush? There's the small brush. Now we go back to um, uh, Screaming Skull. And pick out a few high points again. Just add prominent parts. You can, if you um, skip that step and do that after um, the wash with Agrix Earth Shade, uh, you will get a almost the same result. But almost, um, if you do this before and after applying the wash, you'll have a little bit more smoothness the trick with painting in this style is to have enough smoothness on the model so um, people focus instead uh, on that instead of on the roughness <laughs> of the model if that makes sense Nothing more uh, than that. We will lose too much contrast, so it makes totally sense to do this step roughly and then go with a few etch highlights and stuff like that. Real painted etch highlights, not dry brushed ones, um, after we apply the Agri Earthshade. Um, but we will fill in all the other colors first so that we can wash the whole model in just one step. So the other colors I will use uh, are Hormagon Purple for those little ropes, black for the cables and the undersuit and black metal from scale 75 for the metals. You probably could use um, one of the newer Games Workshop metallics like Iron Warrior or something like that. But I'm not sure. I haven't uh, haven't tested them. I, for this part, need the properties of The scale is 75 paints to pull off the effect that I want. Homogon purple is just an off desaturated purple I like pretty much. It's not too contrasty to the yellow but is on the right side of it 
so to say. If we don't go too thick with the paint, we still can use some of the dry brushed or all the dry brushed edge highlights and also the pre shading we did in some places. This brush is killing me. So it's like a using a thick wash and to redefine these parts we will give the model another dry brush with ultra and gray at the end of all the steps after after we do the wash with acrox earth shade And the same same colors and techniques are used um, on the cables and the rest of the parts on the flame storm gauntlets. brushes done for today maybe uh, get it cleaned a bit for the next session so anywhere else I think we got all the parts that need black Now to the metallics. We don't need much, only one drop. And even that it's is too much most times. And just give it a thin thin layer so that The undercoat, the blue and the brown shine through. If you go too heavy, you will have to uh, re establish the blue and brown tones afterwards with the glazing. So, if you are unsure how or if your metallic will let the pre-shading shine through. Try it on a test model or just apply the metallics first and then glaze them with the appropriate colors. As you can see the brown and blue still shine through. As I want a little different appearance on the wings on his chest, I haven't uh, painted the chrome pre-shading. 
I will use a brown wash later to have this a bit more dull. So that's pretty much it. I could just go with a mix of bone and brown to pick out those bones. And we're ready for the wash with the Agrix Earthshade. No, we're not. There is uh, another step that we want to... Do we? Do we? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, actually, um, there's two ways to apply the weathering on that miniature. The first way is to do it now before the wash so the uh, weathering effect uh, blends in a bit more. Um, and then you would do uh, another go on smaller areas after the wash is dry to get a bit more definition. Or you can um, just um, wash it right now and do all the weathering after we have done um, a few edge highlights. That again depends on how smooth you want to have it. I'm going, uh, I'm painting this for the tabletop in a, uh, it's not really a higher standard, it's not more time used on the paint job, it's um, just um, defining, predefining the the paint a bit more during the process so you get a cool effect at arm's length. So feel free to experiment a little bit. I think I might go right down with the wash. Where is my wash brush? Again, I use a rather big brush for that. And I'm losing not too much time. Focusing on getting the wash into the recesses where it's needed and avoiding to have it pool at places where I don't want it. That means go heavier into the recesses. Leave it there for a bit, but on the other areas over here where you where we just want to tint the yellow a bit. I even brush it away with my finger. So it doesn't pool at places where the light would be bright and not dark. But again this is a kind of we go uh, in between lines and walk in a kind of gray zone here because the wash also is used to get a dirty muddy effect on the miniature. If you don't want to make your hands dirty you could use a q-tip or something or just clean your brush on a towel and collect some of the wash of the miniature. 
if you want to have your yellow more saturated now is also the time to glaze in some uh, Joker Arrow Orange again just to get it a bit more um, more warm a bit more saturated that's totally a thing of taste and there's no wrong or right about it so um, the model looks already great after this it's dirty of course and uh, yeah but it's fast and the next step is to get some focus on it with a few edge highlights uh, with um, screaming skull with a bit of weathering and maybe a f some few lines uh, some black lining with um, incubi darkness but all that after everything is dry So while the wash is drying, I will show you uh, what kind of tool I use for the weathering later. You need some foam, uh, maybe the old stuff from blisters or from uh, figure cases, something like that and plastic straws now if you push that stuff together and push it inside the straw you will get something like that and you can dab that into paint and thus um, create cool weathering effects on your models. I'm making three of these. Not sure if I need all of them, but it makes sense to have different foam stipplers or whatever you want to call them for the different colors so you don't mix them on the foam we want to mix them on the model with yeah no, not wet and wet but a dry layer of a dry layer that is okay so far so the wash should be dry enough so that we can do the weathering and edge highlighting in one go I see a thin line of agrax over there so brush it off I want to use screaming skull at first getting a bit of it into the first sponge sponge is the not foam sponge is the word that I was searching for a minute ago and I always test it on my wooden plinth or on the base or somewhere else. So what I do now I do a, an area highlight with that picking up the most light parts. It doesn't matter if I go over the metallics because that will uh, produce a nice chipping effect too. You can also brush over the edges with that tool. So it's a dry brush and weathering tool two in one. This again creates a little gradient blends in the colors 
and creates a rough weathering effect depending on how hard you go on how many layers and how often you pull it put it onto the model don't to do too much um, else we would soften the overall look of the miniature and we are aiming for a rather high contrast easy readability at arm's length so what I do now is picking out a few edge highlights only the easiest parts and a few focal points on the armor hoping I'm on camera still yes I am just to get essential details visible no matter if it makes sense that there's light or not readability of the model is the key here Another reason why I only pick the easy edge highlights is because I hate edge highlighting. But it can help. Or it definitely helps um, to give the model a more clean, ordered. and structured look give some shine to the cables and also to the metals so I only picked out a few lines as you can see it might have been too much around the helmet could fix that with another go of agrix earth shade of course or we can fix that with placing a few dark extra lines with incubi darkness just to give it a bit extra definition should always use the most time of painting a model on the face or the area around the face so when we just these few lines, it's only three or four lines I did, um, re totally redefine the the helmet and the face and make it a focus point. A little clean up here and there, just to get certain details visible again, a bit more defined. little blend over here stuff like that not too much you can easily um, put an hour into um, black lining the whole miniature but 
if it's just a gaming piece don't say just because that's something bad but as long as you won't win or don't want to win a competition with that your aim should be to get it to cool battle ready look I think that's enough so um, I applied the light weathering first because I use a semi-translucent uh, paint mix for um, the dark weathering spots so that this will tone down the um, the white blotches a bit more the white spots the bone spots so that they don't look too stark I even go back in on a few places to create really light dots like here to get a bit more contrast So as said, this is a mix of I, d I don't know what paints I used. It's um, acrylics and it's wash and it's uh, black and white and brown and green and whatever. I don't really know. It's an an old an old mix. And you might see that it's rather. It's semi semi translucent, so it has something of a wash or a glaze. But you too can get real dark splotches onto the miniature. If you leave it to dry for just a few seconds and then go in with your fingers, you can even get it bit more defined or you can pick up um, the center of the spot you painted so you get that um, water stain water stain effect So, as before, less is more. I think that's pretty much how I want it to look. So, the uh, last thing now would be adding a few st really stark highlights with um, Ultra and Gray, especially. Uh, that's too watery. Only some some few small light dots here and there. to get the impression of a shiny armor can do some scratches too they look best when you apply them not on the light areas but down on the dark ones so the contrast the dark dark light contrast helps making them more visible 
sounds just right. Right. Okay, last finished finishing touch to the metal. Few scratches. Picking out the most highlighted areas and picking out roughly two sides on the bottom two again to either define the part so that it doesn't get invisible and to use the maximum of the contrast light to dark in that area maybe pick out a few dents or something like that and focus on a few pinpoint lights at the back too but that's pretty much it last step will be the eyes I don't think that I have to cover it in this tutorial but I might as well do so there's two different ways of painting these um, I lately use the following method I paint the eyes with well the, in this case the lenses with a thinned incubi darkness so that it pools in the recesses not to paint the um, recesses actually but um, if you just push the brush into the lens and the color pools in the recesses it's about the right consistency and um, it will take you less time um, to paint these as you can see um, this would be already um, enough in my opinion but to add some extra shine I'll give it each a dot of ultra and gray and then glaze in scorpion green to have it a bit more more shiny and pronounced I don't have the real scorpion green on my palette right now so I will um, skip that I'll take a picture of the miniature in my light box now and um, show you at the end of this video so you get to see what you already got to see in the thumbnail um, painting grim dark yellow and weathering on a easy to build aggressor from the Warhammer 40k conquest series I hope um, you learned something I hope you can take something from these videos um, stay tuned be excellent to each other see you next time